Welcome to Compiling Sales List. My name is Jillian Robbins. Today's session is going to introduce you to building free business to business and business to consumer sales lists, all using free library resources. Over the next hour and a half or so, we're going to discuss how you can create targeted and custom searches based on geography, sales, income, and additional refining characteristics, how to find and narrow your target audience, and how to make use of demographics and market research. I encourage you to explore our website and resources after class and email us at brickettfreelibrary.org with additional questions. Sharon Tina shared links to the resource guide for today's class and to Brick's business website in the chat box. We'll also share contact information, a recording of this session, the slides, and all the links with you today via email after today's program. Additionally, Sharon, Tina, and I are going to be taking questions throughout. My name is Jillian Robbins. I'm the Business Services Supervisor in the Business Resource and Innovation Center, or BRIC. Previously, I was a business librarian and then program coordinator for job seeking services in the BRIC. I've worked for the Free Library Philadelphia for almost seven years. My colleague, Sharon Tina, is also on this webinar today. She'll be able to answer questions in chat or make sure that I get the questions directly. Long before COVID-19 was on our minds, Brick moved to a new state-of-the-art space on the ground floor of Parkway Central Library in April 2019. Our new space offers a collaborative work environment with comfortable furniture and free Wi-Fi. We also have meeting rooms that can be reserved for free. We look forward to welcoming you back into the brick space when it's safe to return. In today's class, we're gonna cover two different types of sales lists, business to business or B2B, and business to customer or consumer, otherwise known as B2C. This includes generating lists of businesses, recently established businesses, people, and people who have recently moved to a new home or apartment. Before we start generating lists, let's first talk about targeting customers using customer segments. We spoke about this in more depth during last month's class, Introduction to Demographic Research. And Sharon Tina is gonna put a link to that class in the chat if you need a refresher or if you missed it. Customer segments are groups of customers based on common characteristics for the purpose of effectively marketing to specific types of businesses or people. Customer segmentation can be practiced by all businesses, big or small, within any industry, regardless of whether they sell online or they sell in person. Begin by gathering and analyzing data to create your sales list and end by acting on that information gathered in a way that is appropriate and effective for your audience. Finding your target market and creating customer segments allows you to find potential customers and then better tailor marketing efforts to various audience subsets. Specifically, customer segmentation helps a community to create and communicate targeted marketing practices and messages that will resonate with specific groups of customers, but not with others. These other customers will receive messages that are tailored to their own needs and interests instead. Select the best communication channel for the segment, which might be email, social media posts, radio advertising, TV commercials, or another approach, depending on the segment and their needs. Focus on the most profitable customers through demographic and psychographic research, and upsell and cross-sell other products and services that customers might be interested in. Businesses may decide to create a B2B, again, business to business segmentation, or a B2C, or business to customer or consumer segmentation. We'll talk about both during today's class. When identifying your customer segments, it's important to ask yourself, to whom are you selling? Are you a B2C or a B2B company? Your sales and marketing strategies will be different if you're selling directly to customers versus to other businesses. After you determine who you're selling to, it's time to dive into demographics in order to determine your customer's characteristics or what drives them to purchase from your business. You will explore their basic demographics and geographical location for example, do they generally live in Philadelphia 
or in a specific few neighborhoods. Perhaps they are generally millennial women, say ages 25 to 35, or maybe they are retail stores that have been operating for 10 years or more within the city of Philadelphia. If you are a B2C company, once those general characteristics are determined, you can begin to explore their buying and spending habits to see if they'd be interested in your product or your service. For example, if people are spending money on, or, on organic food, it's pretty safe to say they value health and wellness and are willing to spend a little extra money on those items. This information will help you to create a psychographic profile of your target audience. Oftentimes, consumers are guided by their attitudes and subjective perceptions when making purchase decisions, and psychographics cover these aspects of the buying process. Demographic profiles are a great place to start and can divide your target audience more broadly by age and location, um, but psychographics allow for greater leverage in influencing sales. For example, demographic information might tell you something about a person's age, but psychographic information will tell you that the person is just starting a family or is in the market for baby products. Sharantina will share an article about getting started with psychographics, and we'll talk about determining them when we discuss Simply Analytics later in this class. Detailed demographic and psychographic information is mostly used for B2C sales lists and marketing. B2B companies are lucky because many businesses have websites that explain their purposes, values, and mission. Remember, we go into more detail in that intro to demographics class. Before we jump in, I want to learn a little bit more about what kind of list that you're most interested in. I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll. So take a second and answer the question, what kinds of sales lists are you most interested in generating? Are you interested in business to business, business to customer? maybe both, or you're not sure and you're just kind of taking the class to see what, uh, what processes you can use at the library. Okay, we have all the votes in. I'm gonna go ahead and end the polling and share the results with you. So it looks like um, we have a very small class, but most of you are interested in B2C, which is uh, the marketing to consumer. And we have a couple of people here that are interested in both business to business and business to customer. So that always really helps me to frame a class and see if there are certain things that I should spend more time on um, or less time on. So thanks so much for answering that. Before we uh, proceed, do we have any quick questions about customer segments or the definition of B2B versus B2C? No questions so far in the chat room. Okay, thanks, Sharantina. Yep. So let's go ahead and start with uh, business to business sales list. We quickly defined B2B in the previous section, but let's dig a little deeper. B2B companies are companies that sell to other businesses rather than directly to consumers. My favorite example of a B2B company is the paper company Dunder Mifflin from the office. Dunder Mifflin sells paper to other offices like law firms. Uh, they face big paper and office supply stores like Staples. Dunder Mifflin's biggest asset is considered to be their personal touch that the big companies can't replicate. In business to business marketing, a company might segment customers according to a wide range of factors, including industry, location, number of employees, and possibly products previously purchased from the company. We're going to spend a lot of time in one particular database today, Daddle Axle Reference Solutions. And if you're familiar with our resources, um, I just wanna let you know that Data Axle Reference Solutions, or for short, Reference Solutions, is formerly known as Reference USA. It's gonna take me some time to get used to saying Reference Solutions instead of Reference USA. And we're going to use it to create a list of ideal clients based on industry, business size, and or sales volume. Once we have our list, we'll be able to customize it, save it, and download it. Let's 
take a look at an example of a B2B business. An entrepreneur would like to sell gourmet pet food to pet stores in the Philadelphia metro region. Now, it can be easy to become frustrated when researching companies. Keep in mind that publicly traded companies are easier to research than private companies because they are required to publish data in annual reports to investors. Researching companies involves using company and industry resources, as well as your own professional knowledge. A list of companies won't do you much good if you don't have information on them, specifically, or on their industry in general. It's also important to rely on some of the knowledge you've gathered through learned experiences as a professional and entrepreneur. For example, don't jump into trying to sell coffee to a cafe without doing any research on the cafe itself, as well as the larger industry. For more information on market research, you can watch our class on YouTube. Sharantina is gonna share a link to that class in the chat. Some companies are easier to research than others. Be innovative and flexible in your research. According to the balance, as of 2019, approximately 46% of small businesses do not have a website. It can be hard to research a business if they do not have an online presence. It's important to get creative by using review sites like Yelp and Google, as well as physically going to locations to experience the business's operations in person. Get creative. It's okay to visit or call a place of business to inquire about their vendors and their services. Act as if you're an interested client or customer. Get to know industry classification systems and codes to search industries effectively. Industry classification codes define businesses based on the activities in which they are primarily engaged. It makes for more streamlined and data-driven results. For example, you might call a place that sells coffee by the cup a cafe, but someone else might call it a coffee shop. If you search for either of those terms, you'll get results, but they'll be mixed. If you use a classification code for snack and non-alcoholic beverage bars, I know it's a mouthful, um, you'll get better and more standard results. More on that next. Quickly, industry classification codes brought to you by the US Census Bureau are the government's way of classifying every industry for research and statistical reasons. It is at its heart a research tool. Again, the codes define businesses based on the activities in which they are primarily engaged. You can find your code in a couple of different ways. You can find it in a big, thick directory that has Bible thin pages, not my personal favorite route. You can use census.gov slash makes to browse and keyword search. Sharantina shared that link in the chat. You can also search similar businesses and replicate their codes. We'll talk more about that when we explore data axle reference solutions in a bit. Finally, you can always use good old Google to search, but do make sure you check the results against census.gov slash NAICS because sometimes it's an outdated number or it's just plain wrong. There are two different types of industry classification codes, SIC, the Standard Industrial Classification, and NAICS, N-A-I-C-S, the North American Industry Classification System. NAICS is the current classification system used by the federal government for classifying businesses. It groups establishments into industries based on the similarity of their products, services, and production. The NAICS was updated in 2017, and we can expect another update in 2022. NAICS can be frustrating sometimes because it is quite broad. SIC is the older classification system. It's not very different from the NAICS system, but it was more specific. NAICS replaced SIC in 1997 when many industries were new and it just became too much to classify many of the newer dot-com and tech-related industries. Several data sets are still available with SIC-based data, but nearly all market research on industries is searchable only by NAICS. I recommend starting with NAICS and knowing your NAICS code for sure. Remember the major difference between SIC and NAICS uh, classification is that NAICS tends to be broader where SIC is more specific, especially when it comes to new and emerging industries. Sharantina shared links to SIC and NAICS structures for some light reading. Um, keep these in mind when we begin our research. 
Do we have any questions? No questions so far in chat. Great. Now we're going to look at data axle reference solutions to begin generating lists via the free library databases that you can access from home with your library card number and PIN. You can access BRIC's business databases via our website at freelibrary.org slash business. Sharantina shared that link in the chat. From freelibrary.org slash business, you can access sample documents, such as an example of a business plan, links to helpful online resources by subjects, and of course the databases. Click on the red Premier Business Databases link to access the databases. That link will take you to this databases page. Notice that it filters the databases to those specifically geared for businesses and entrepreneurs. You can also filter it to subjects such as digital media, digital magazines, online learning, and more. Once you click on a blue database link, you'll be asked to enter your library card number and PIN if you are off-site from the library. If you do not have a library card, you can get a library card on freelibrary.org. The login and get a free library card options will always be on the upper right-hand side of every free library website. Sharantina shared a direct link to the business and entrepreneurs databases in the chat as well. Data Axle Reference Solutions, again, formerly known as Reference USA, is a collection of databases. It's a powerhouse of information on consumer and business data. It's essentially a tool for building lists. In the case of a B2B sales list, we're building a list of businesses that we hope to sell to. Thankfully, once you've used one reference solutions database, you've used them all. They all function very similarly and the features are much the same. For the purposes of creating a B2B sales list, Reference Solutions has two main databases, US businesses and US new businesses. There's also a third database, US healthcare, which is helpful if your business sells to doctors, dentists, medical offices, and hospitals. If you're selling to that audience, please let Sharon Tina and me know in the chat. The database suite contains over 62 million business listings. It can also help to identify areas of economic development if you see a lot of businesses thriving and or opening in an area. It's a hyper-local tool that reveals details on businesses, cities, and neighborhoods. Using the advanced search feature, you can fully customize your search to find businesses by location, size, sales volume, industry classification code, and more. After you customize your search, you can view the results as a list, chart, or heat map, and continually re refine to a larger, smaller area. The default list results will actually generate a list of businesses and their locations. Clicking on a result will give you more detailed information on the business. You can also create a free account so you can save your work. You can download your results, but downloads are limited to 50 results if you're off-site and 150 results on-site at the free library. So saving your searches is really helpful. Reference Solutions is updated weekly. After a recent conversation with a Reference Solution representative, I learned that some new data axle updates will include daily updates. You can also download Reference Solutions as an app for iOS or Android. It's a very flexible resource. I'm going to demonstrate US businesses and then I'll show you healthcare very quickly as well. And I'll demonstrate US new businesses in a little bit. So Sharantina, do we have any people who are uh, specifically interested in US healthcare? So no one has expressed interest just yet. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. All right, I am going to go ahead and pop into the database so we can take a look.
Okay. So from our website, freelibrary.org slash business, we clicked on the databases page and we scrolled down all the way from the beginning to reference solutions. It's listed alphabetically. And when you enter data axle reference solutions, the homepage is going to look just like this. And you will see all the different databases listed. Remember, it's actually a suite of databases. And if you click on any of these pieces, click on more information, it'll give you a nice description of what the database can do and the search criteria included. So right now we're gonna look at US businesses. You click on search. It takes us to this quick search page. And today we're gonna to really focus on advanced search because we're building a specific list of businesses. So clicking on the advanced search tab, you'll notice here on uh, my left-hand side, we have our toolbar where we can go ahead and uh, pick and choose the items that we'd like to limit our search to. Lots of different options. Anytime you select an item, our most basic search would be by geography, for example. Say we wanna search um, the city of Philadelphia. If you click an item, it will then populate in the center where it will give you further items you can manipulate your search by. One item that will always persist in the center is the record type option. So it defaults to verified businesses and this is Reference USA um, kind of covering itself. These businesses to the best of Reference USA's knowledge are completely verified and the information is accurate. And you'll see without adding any other bits of information here on my right hand side on this next toolbar, um, we have the option to update count or view results. Um, if we just look at verified businesses without adding any other criteria, we have about 15.5 million business records across the country. If we were to select unverified businesses, it's going to go way, way up to 59 million and change. And that's because it, it really is impossible to verify every single business in the country, especially hyper-local, very small businesses. Um, Reference USA, probably they know that something is operating, there is a business. Um, they might not have a website, they might be relatively new, or they might just be unverified by Reference USA. So I generally like to start with verified businesses, especially if I'm searching the entire city, and especially if I'm thinking about selling, most likely a more established business is going to purchase um, an item from another business. So just keep that in mind. I recommend in Reference USA, just searching multiple ways and different ways and getting really comfortable before you are completely done with your list. Um, but in real time, you can always update your count, see how the different items that you've selected affect your numbers. And when you're happy with your records, you can go ahead and click view results. That will take us into our list making page and we have some further options we'll explore as well. Also note when you populate the center here, there will always be a little search tip item that you can click on and it will give you that information, um, little bits of uh, tips and info really useful stuff. I also want to point you towards the learning center and the webinars. Very good information here. Um, lots of webinars, resources, and guides that you can watch and download if you need further assistance as well. You can also view this in uh, multiple different languages. That's a relatively new feature. So let's go ahead and do our sample search here. Our most basic search is going to be by location, so geography, and business type. And if you're a B2B business, um, you might have specific needs in mind. You might know you want to sell to a business in Philadelphia. So we can start with that. We put that in our search, click go. Once we've selected an item in blue, it will show up under selected and we can go ahead and update our count. So we have 65,000 businesses. If we were to select unverified businesses, it's gonna pop way up to 217,000. You might be as a B2B business, you might not really care what industry you're, uh, you're selling to. Maybe you are a, um, you know, a cleaning service or a janitorial service. You might not really mind what industry it is. You care more about something like business size, say for example, number of employees. You are a commercial cleaning firm. 
you might want to only work with businesses that have at least 50 and maybe up to 500 employees. So you can select that range, click update count. Now we have 1700 verified businesses with that amount of employee. You could also be interested in something like sales volume. You select that here. You have the option to select a range or a specific um, amount. Maybe you only want to work, maybe you are a bookkeeper and you want to work with businesses who are making at least a million dollars, but not more than $20 million. Now we're down to 12,000 businesses. So very, very customizable. If we are like in our example, looking to sell pet food, we might be interested here in business type. So we're looking maybe to sell specifically to pet stores in Philadelphia. When you select business type and keyword SIC NAIC search, it does default to that SIC search, um, but you can also switch it to NAICS uh, for that different option there. You can also search um, the longer codes, the eight digit codes that are a little more specific, or you can search broader industries. NAICS codes can be between um, generally two and six digits. If we're looking for restaurants, um, seven two would be food and accommodation and it can get more and more specific. So your six digit code would be something like full service or limited service restaurant. Reference USA is a really great keyword search. Um, you don't have to know your code necessarily. You can type in um, something like 722 and start getting our results for, uh, for restaurants. You can also just type in the keyword for restaurants. You also have the option to search by SIC code. So one thing to note is the option for search all versus search primary. If you're searching all SIC codes and say it is a, um, a pet store, for example, Target, if you're searching all codes, all NAICS codes or all SIC codes, you would get Target showing up as pet supplies, groceries, electronics, lots of different codes. Same with your superstores like Walmart, um, Kmart, Target, anything like this. If you're searching primary only, you would get businesses that are primarily pet supply stores. So places like Petsco, Petco, PetSmart, Doggy Style. So pick and choose if you wanna have a broader search or a very specific search. So if we're looking for pet supply stores here, um, Reference USA has been a little bit slow recently with the keyword. It was doing this yesterday too, I apologize. Um, you can go through and it will eventually uh, populate for us here. Let's see. Um, or you can type it specifically into the keyword. I'm just going to go ahead and type in the keyword for um, the next code for restaurants. So now if we update our search, we have primary NAICS codes for full service restaurants. That's 722511. And we have 3,400 verified businesses. Next, you can decide to add in that information for a number of employees or sales volume. You can add in some extra pieces of information, things like um, if they're a public or private owned company, or if there are a single location or a headquarter location. This can be really useful, say, if we're searching restaurants and you want to eliminate um, chain restaurants. Think of all the Chipotle's that have opened in the Philadelphia area recently. Um, here, if you wanted to just look at single location restaurants, kind of your smaller business, you could select that as well. And that will take out plenty of locations. Almost a thousand locations were removed there. We also have some special selects. Say you wanna work with restaurants, but you're really a web designer. You could add in things like businesses that have a website or businesses that do not have a website. You can, um, back with our other example, if you wanna find businesses that have been opened for a certain amount of time, you can add in windows here. If you wanted to work with businesses that have been open at least 10 years, um, you can select businesses open between 2010 and 2020. You can go ahead and select all of those if you choose. Update our count. That brings us down pretty far. Um, restaurants can be a little rough sometimes. They have a huge failure rate. So if we just want to find restaurants that have opened within the last 10 years, um, that brings our number way down.
So let's go ahead and take a look at our list here of businesses of restaurants in Philadelphia that are verified. If we go ahead and click view results now, this is actually going to take us into our list page. And you'll notice we have a list here of the company, their address, location, phone number if it's a landline, and this little symbol here means that it's a corporation and it has a parent company, usually a publicly traded company. So here, if we go ahead, let's take a look at, um, let's look at 11th Street Hoagies. If we click on that specific item, one record here, you get some general location information. Here's their industry profile. So here's how they're classifying themselves. We did select that we wanted primary NAICS codes. So these are primarily all full service restaurants. There's the SIC code and there's the NAICS code. Usually um, only very large businesses have a business profile completed. Um, we have some quick demographics, how many employees they have, what their sales volume is, uh, general information. So they've been operating for about two years. Last updated in May, 2020, so very recent. Um, we have, if you're lucky, you'll get a management directory, an owner or a manager. Company news and stock data are for only publicly traded businesses. You'll get some expenditures. These are estimates generated by reference solutions on what they spend on some things like accounting or contracting. This can be really useful for you as a B2B company because you can see what they might spend on something like contractors. You'll get some nice charts here on uh, sales volume and employee size. This is a very new business, so the data isn't very old. Only established in 2019. Um, you'll get some business history, which can be interesting if they've moved locations, maybe to a larger or smaller location, if they've had a lot of executive change. Um, all that is really good background info. One of my favorite parts of the database is their competitors report. So what you'll get here is a list of top competitors, which has been compiled also by reference solutions. And for something like a restaurant, um, they rely very heavily on foot traffic. So here you'll notice that these competitors are right on top of each other. Um, it might be different if you're a more novel business or if you don't rely as much on uh, foot traffic because you know, they won't be on top of each other as much. Um, a pet supply store, for example, you might find in a couple of different zip codes because there's not um, a ton of them on top of each other within walking distance. So very interesting information. But that's one specific record. If we go back to our list, sometimes the power of the database can be the whole. So here, um, if you want to limit your search because you don't want to be marketing to 3,400 businesses, that's way too many. Um, if you select all here, a couple of features we can look at. First of all, you can save your search. That's that feature that I recommended. Um, so you can maybe not download all 3,400, but you can always come back to this list, especially if you're the kind of company, say like a janitor service, that you're gonna have multiple different um, target audiences, maybe law firms, restaurants, and um, gyms, for example. You can make different lists and save each of those. You can download your list. So here, um, I recommend keeping it on Comet Unlimited, but you can go ahead and you can customize the information that you'd like to download to your Excel sheet. For example, we might not need record type. We know we asked for verified businesses, but you might wanna know the executive's um, uh, title, gender, and name, for example. Um, or you might wanna know what neighborhood they're in. You can then customize that information and either download it to an Excel sheet or email it to yourself. Going back, we also have some great charts we can use. Um, I wanna show you the heat map here. So since we have 3,400 records, we can go ahead and we can see, we ask for restaurants, which there are plenty in the city, but you can see on this heat map just how many restaurants there are and where they might be concentrated. This can be really helpful if you're doing a social media blast or you're advertising to people or companies because you can see where you might want to blast. Uh, down below, you'll also see results by zip code. So for example, 19107 and 19147, they have the highest concentration of restaurants in the city, um, 19103. So that's kind of like old city area, um, Queen Village and Center City. Makes a lot of sense if you think about it. And we can always uh, use this like you would kind of a Google map. You can zoom in and out 
and you can get really, really close and see where these businesses are really, really concentrated. And when you get close enough, you will actually be able to pick out individual companies. So here we can see um, near you know, Old City by the police uh, area, the Central Police Station, there are a lot of different restaurants, lots of people who are going out to eat lunch, for example. Um, and if you see a plus sign here, it means that there are two restaurants really close to each other or on top of each other. And then you can keep zooming in and out. This can be really helpful, say you want to target a specific area. If you're, again, you're a cleaning service, um, you might just wanna go ahead and target this specific area for the time being and just hit them all at one time. And it's really convenient if you are a cleaning service, you can, time is money, you can hit each one maybe over um, a couple of days really close together. So you can get really specific and really targeted. You can also change the map to reflect, um, it defaults to location, but you can change that to reflect sales volume um, or number of employees as well. And you can download or print this map in any view. If you go back to our results, we also have the option to view um, some different summaries and charts. We select all here. We can go through and we can generate lists. Um, if you wanna show it by SIC code, sales volume, um, you can generate some really interesting lists. If, for example, you don't know what industry you're in and you wanna see the top results by industry, you can select that map to be generated by NAICS code. Or if you do have a specific industry like our restaurants here, you can generate a list based on how many employees they have sort it from most employees to least employees and uh, start your sales list with the highest sales volume or the highest employee size and then work your way down. Very, very flexible. If we revise our search one more time, say uh, we looked at the whole city and we've got our heat map, we've made our lists, we might decide that instead of using city and state, we wanna remove that and we wanna look at zip codes only we can add in some of the zip codes that we saw. So let's say we wanna focus on 19147 in Queen Village, can update our count. Now we're down to 240 businesses and with a much smaller list to work with, we can view our results again and we can start to hone in larger, smaller and get a really specific look at restaurants in Queen Village. Very flexible. Um, going back to our homepage in Reference Solutions, just want to flip into um, US Healthcare just to show you some of the options in that as well in our advanced search. As you notice here, they look very, very similar. Like I said, once you've used one database, you've kind of used them all. You can go ahead and replicate that same search. So here, if you wanted to find in Philadelphia, oops, doctors, um, we can search by their primary specialty, the year they've graduated, um, how many prescriptions they're completing per week, how many patients they're seeing, um, where they're licensed, medical school attended, and you can get a list of these doctors by office or manager name. Um, you can also search specifically by their name, their title, gender, and age. So if you want to market to female doctors between the age of say 30 and 40, you can get really specific there as well. Just wanted to let you know that that was also an option. Let's pause here. If we have any questions on B2C, uh, before we move on to B2C sales list, add them to the chat so Sharon Tina can see them. So we did have a couple of people interested in the healthcare database. Okay, cool. Yep. Cool. Any questions about the healthcare? I can go into a little more detail. We have about two minutes. Any specific questions? All right, I'm going to go ahead and move on then. And Sharon Tina can answer your questions as we go as well. So let's move on to B2C or business to consumer sales list. B2C businesses are companies that sell directly to consumers. Most retail shops, including brick and mortar and online are B2C. 
anywhere you as a consumer are directly purchasing an item is a B2C business. It's helpful to create a target market before attempting to generate a sales list. So your company may direct its marketing efforts and sales um, so it can better sell its products. Keep in mind that there are a lot more people than businesses. So you want to keep your target relatively tight. You don't wanna end up with a sales list that includes tens of thousands of people. That's not time or cost effective. Save the long list for your demographic research and for narrowing down your target audience before you begin generating sales lists. In business to consumer marketing, companies often segment customers according to demographics that include location, income, spending habits, age, gender, marital status, and life stage, including single, married, divorced, empty nester, or retired. Some companies are both B2B and B2C. For example, think of the popular water bottle Swell. You can buy directly from them online, or you can purchase them from a store because Swell sells to other stores through wholesale. So that's a great example. Um, I know we have some people here who are interested in both B2B and B2C. That's a great example of a company that successfully does both. Let's take a look at our example of how an interior design company might break down one of their target audiences. An interior design company could choose to market to homeowners between the ages of 35 and 65 with incomes over $150,000 in Philadelphia. The market is broken into two niches, busy professionals and retiring baby boomers. Here we have a group of urban people who can afford high-end interior design and are also possibly too busy to decorate for themselves. We're going to look at data axle reference solutions again to narrow down our target market demographically and by location. Then we're going to use Simply Analytics to look more deeply into some psychographic information. Finally, we'll turn back to data axle to generate our target sales list. Keep this in mind as we move through the databases. Just like with companies, it can be differently frustrating to research consumers. Keep in mind that if you can master a B2B sales list, you'll have no problem creating B2C sales lists. The consumer databases and data, data axle reference solutions function very similar, similarly to the business databases. The business databases are more complicated because there are so many more features to customize by as there's just more publicly available information on businesses than there are about consumers, um, AKA you and me. So it's kind of a good thing. Again, there are many more people than businesses. So keep in mind, we will have more results when searching lists of consumers. So it's important to keep in mind to be targeted. Try searching by zip code or by drawing your own shape on the map. Before you dive into generating sales lists, complete some preliminary research on your target audience using industry resources, demographic research, as well as your own professional knowledge. If you completed a business plan or already have existing information on who your customers are, you should be able to narrow your results pretty significantly. If you're starting out, I suggest you watch that recording of Intro to Demographics and Sharon Tina can share that link again in the chat. To create a B2C sales list, again, we're gonna use reference solutions. This time we're looking for information on people. So we're going to use US consumers and lifestyles and new movers and homeowners to produce potential sales leads based on, for example, location, home value, income, years in home, type of home, interests, and more. We can also use these databases for general demographic information. Reference Solutions US Consumers and Lifestyles and New Movers and Homeowners includes data on over 310 million consumers and 16 million recent movers and homeowners. Again, using the advanced search feature, you can fully customize your search to find hyperlocal information on ideal customers. After you customize your search, you can view the results as you would in US businesses as a list, a chart, heat map, um, and you can continually refine to larger and smaller audiences. The default list results will actually generate lists of names, addresses, and landline phone numbers, no cell phone numbers. Clicking on a result will give you more detailed information on the person, like their general income range, their home value, how long they've been in their home, and potential lifestyle interests. I'm going to demonstrate US consumers and lifestyles 
and I'll demonstrate new movers and homeowners in a couple of minutes. Remember to create an account so you can save your work and download your results. So going back to reference solutions here, this time we're gonna look at consumers and lifestyle. So when we click search, again, you're gonna use advanced search. And from there, um, the first thing to note is contact per household. If you took our demographics class, or if you're looking just for general information on people, you would use the default all per household. That's our demographic view. And that's going to give you information on multiple people living in the same home. For example, um, roommates, husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, children over 18. If you search one per household, that is more of a sales list view. So if you're starting out, you're gonna start with all per household to get a, a feel for the people living in the area. But once you're ready to generate that sales list like we are today, we're gonna to switch it to one per household. And that's really helpful because you don't wanna be sending out postcards or information to um, the same person. I can't tell you how many times my spouse and I have gotten the same Jiffy Lube postcard for 15% off our next oil change because they're sending it to two people who have different last names but live in the same apartment. So one per household will eliminate that. One bad thing about one per household is it's generally gonna give you the information of the person who has filed head of household. Um, that eliminates a lot of women. Most people who are filing as head of household and families are the husband, just the way it is. So keep that in mind. And if we switch it from one per household, we're gonna go from over 310 million. Um, whoops, we can't search all yet. Um, it's gonna cut our results by about 50% keep that in mind. So here again, we can start with our larger location. We can search for uh, Philadelphia. Remember, you can always hone in. So here we have Philadelphia and one per household. We're going to go, um, if we looked at all per household, for example, it's about 1.4 million. If we switch that to one per household, it's about half. Um, 590 million or 590,000 and change. So right here, right now, we can already view our results and get a list of, uh, there's our names, our street addresses, location, and if it's a landline, it'll be listed. This is way too many results to, to view, um, but it can be helpful if you select everyone and if you want to look at that heat map, um, keep in mind that you can only look at heat maps for under 500,000 people. But if you look at the heat map, you can see where people are closely grouped together, um, for example. And you can look at those similar charts and details. And you can see where people, for example, um, are more likely to, to live. Whoops, if we click on uh, summary, we can sort people by highest income, lowest income. Um, how long they've been in their home, occupation, really very specific. We can even sort by zip code to see where the greatest number of people are living. If we go back to our results here, I just wanna show you uh, what one result is gonna look like. So here you'll get the residence information, um, that basic information from before. They've been in their home from 11 years, they're a single male. You'll get some general neighborhood information, um, estimated household income of this individual, the home value for this individual and some information about the neighborhood. And if they have any interest lifestyle based, which we'll talk about in a minute, they will also be checked off here. If we go back, let's go ahead and revise our search. Instead of looking at the whole city, let's look again at 19147. And you can add in as many zip codes as you'd like. So like a 19147, let's take a look at um, income, for example. So here you can select a range like you would with sales volume. If we want our potential target, say we are that interior design firm, we wanna find people with over $150,000 in income and go ahead and select all. This is gonna take our results way down. So we started at 590,000, we're down to about 4,000. That already takes a ton of people out. Um, we also, I'll talk about this lifestyles option here. Now, lifestyle information, if we click on the search tips, it will tell you a little bit about the information. 
Um, these are categories of people who have um, been graded on a scale of zero to nine of interest. If you're scoring a six or higher, you're tagged as having an interest in this lifestyle or a heavier interest. This is mostly based on information that is um, gathered from mail, what kind of mailers people are getting, what kind of magazines, if any, people are subscribing to. So if you notice you're getting an uptick in advertisements and um, brochures for hiking materials or makeup or something like that, it could be because you have been tagged as having a lifestyle interest. You can also go ahead and you can expand all of these items with the plus sign. So if you're looking specifically with people who are interested in golf, that's a good sign for people who have uh, money, maybe are retired, um, we can view our count. So we're down to 66 specific people. Keep in mind, you're eliminating a ton of people and the kind of mail that people get is just one tiny piece of the puzzle. Um, so this can be a really effective search, but you are limiting your search very much. So use it, you know, don't take it for the holy grail, take it with a grain of salt, but it is really interesting, really useful information. You can also expand this as well, and you can do an and search or an or, an or search. So if you change, for example, the default is an or search. If you wanted the example here is people who are interested in photography or sports, um, you would find people that have either one of those selections. You can also switch that to a very, very specific search, even more specific. If you want to find people who are interested in photography and sports, they would have to have both of those items to show up in your search. So if you want to find people that are interested in golf and let's say um, books and magazines, update our count. We have 55 people who have both of those interests, a very targeted uh, list. So if we view our results this time, we have just 55 results. If we click on a specific record here, you'll see that they fall into the things that we've asked for. We have the location, they are in 19147. They have an income over $150,000. They live in Philadelphia. And this person, while they are interested in golf and book buying, they're also interested in a lot of information. So you can see all of their lifestyle results here as well. You can also, if this person is your perfect target, you can show their neighbors if you assume that they may have similar interests as well. You can search neighbors within 0.1 to 5 miles. And of course, we can still view our heat map here if we select all of our records. We can view our heat map and we can see um, within 19147 where these people might be concentrated and you can zoom in and out. So we have a heavy concentration here, kind of by um, kind of by the river. You can see there's a lot of people in this general area that have those specific interests. Um, and then kind of down over here, no people with that specific interest with those in mind. So you would not need to concentrate your marketing in this area, and you wouldn't need to send any mailers out in that area. You can keep them in a very small, concentrated area. And you can, of course, uh, switch that map again to reflect income or home value. It might change our results a little bit, not too much. If we go back to our results again, we can revise our search anytime here. Um, I'm going to take out the lifestyle interest for now. And I want to show you um, the consumer snapshot. So here I'm going to add in a couple of different zip codes. I wanna go and expand my search a little bit. I'm gonna add in center city and I'm gonna add in um, old city. Those kind of larger zip codes that we saw a lot of businesses in before. Now, if we update our count, we still have that income requirement. We have one per household. We're down to 6,400 people. Now, if we wanna expand a little bit, I just wanna show you what the consumer snapshot is going to do. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is, right? Let's go ahead and target our millennial audience there, say 30 to 44. And maybe this time we wanna find um, women. If we update our count, we're down to 1600 people in those three zip codes. We can view our results. And notice this time you're going to lose the names and phone numbers. I know, stay with me, it's not a good sales list just yet. But here you can view your chart, for example, by zip code. So we selected three zip codes. 
If you want to show our summary, it'll show us where we're most likely to find that kind of person in the zip code. So 19107 is very small. We only have 56 people that meet that criteria. 19103, we have 498 people meeting that criteria. And here we have 19147. We have the highest rate of people showing that income. So we were on the right track with 19147. So we can revise our search here. Oops, I have a cat coming in the screen. Excuse me. Sorry, bud. <laughs> Almost lunchtime for them. Um, excuse me. So here we can expand and we can say, okay, we know we're on the right track with 19147. Let's take out those other zip codes and we'll take out our consumer snapshot. And now we know that we're on the right track and we can look at our, um, our sales list again and maybe hone it in a little further. Maybe we want just $200,000. Um, and we can go ahead and view our results. And now we have with our 1900 people, we can kind of take a look at that general area that we saw with the mailers before where we saw people um, in that general area in Queen Village by the river. We can say, all right, let's look at that heat map. We know there are people with interest in golf and books. And we can say, if they have mailers and interests, there's probably likely to be a lot more people in this general area. And we can assume um, that's our area of target. And we can do our sales list based on that small area. But again, it's really similar to um, US businesses. And here we have the beginning of our sales list. If the whole zip code's too much and we wanna target that small area by the river, we can go ahead and instead of searching the whole zip code, we can do a map-based search. And we can go ahead and draw that shape. So here's our map. We want to hone in on 19147 right over here. We can use plus or minus to dive on in. And then we can go ahead and draw a shape. We can draw a radius around a small area. And we can get very specific and get just people who are living in that small area to be on our sales list. I do want to talk quickly about, we saw in the database um, that there can be potential emails available. It says here on the bottom, out of 64,000 results, for example, there are 3,100 with email addresses. So after speaking to a Data Axle Reference Solutions representative, I don't have a simple answer for you. I always get this question during class and the pricing and purchasing of emails from Data Axle is not an easy process. The pricing is quantity based and also based on the options of licensing or deployment. The pricing starts at 50 cents per email address and drops down to 4 cents per email address, depending on the quantity of addresses you're requesting. So like many things, if you purchase in bulk, it's less expensive. Another representative from Reference Solutions said it costs approximately $500 for 1000 emails. If you, the client, licenses the email addresses for your own deployment, that is, if you purchase them to have and to view on your own, it's actually more expensive than having Data Axle handle the email deployments themselves. Also, the email addresses are often not compatible with third-party deployment platforms such as MailChimp or Constant Contact. Those systems do not allow for third-party email addresses to be uploaded. Um, Data Axle essentially wants you to use their platform. And here's a quote from one of the representatives that says, quote, their deployment or their email deployment solutions are turnkey safe and highly effective. Also per another rep, quote, we have an entire division devoted to email addresses and email deployment. So we always have the client work with that division for the most cost effective and best fitting solution, end quote. That's all I really have to say on purchasing emails from Data Axel. Um, I don't know if, of anyone who's actually done it. And I will say at least for B2B sales lists, you can often find some kind of contact um, for a business online or by calling them. And it takes longer to do that research, but it is of course more cost-effective because you're doing it on your own. Sharon Tina shared some information on purchasing emails via reference solutions in the chat. You can explore those further. 
Do we have any questions on US consumers and lifestyle? Remember to add them to the chat for Sharon Tina. It, yeah, I was actually answering one in the chat. Um, someone just wanted to know why the names disappeared from the search uh, once we put in the consumer snapshot. So I was just, I'm literally typing it out. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. That's a great question. Sharon Tina will type that out, I'm sure. But basically, that's no longer public available information. And I always, I'm always like, oh, curses. I wish they had that. But keep in mind, that's you and me. I don't know if you'd want that information uh, freely available on a database. I know I don't want my information out there. So Sharon Tina can continue to type that. Um, any other questions? No, that was pretty much it. Okay, cool. So let's talk about service leads. Um, use the new businesses and the new movers and homeowners databases to generate service leads by seeing who's new to your neighborhood, whether they're an individual or family who's moved there or a business that's open. These databases are particularly useful for both B2B and B2C businesses who are service providers, such as landscapers and roofers, civic associations like houses of worship um, or neighborhood associations and community development organizations, as well as membership-based businesses such as banks and gyms. Use the advanced search feature again to limit your search by industry code, geography, other and additional relevant features as well. And here you can add a time frame so you can see the most recent additions and the move distance to ensure that they are in fact new to your neighborhood. You can use the heat map feature again to discern where the densest areas of movement are to see real time trends. It can also help to identify areas of economic development if you see a lot of people or businesses that have recently moved to an area. Remember that if you identify a new or upcoming area of growth, then it's safe to assume that other entrepreneurs before you have too. There may be more competition for customers in this area. Check in on new businesses and new movers and homeowners frequently so you can get in at the beginning. Be sure to save your search as well. Um, and then you can set a reminder to check in throughout the year. It can be useful to send welcome to the neighborhood incentives, for example. And keep in mind that the information in these two databases will be less robust than in US businesses and in US consumers and lifestyles, simply because there's less information about a new business or a person who's recently moved. So for example, let's take a look at a house painting company that wants to reach new homeowners in the neighborhood who have bought houses for more than $200,000. We can use Reference Solutions US New Movers and Homeowners to find where people recently purchased homes for over $200,000 and then generate their list of name and addresses. Similarly, we can use Reference Solutions US New Businesses to find recently opened businesses within different industries. Reference Solutions New Movers and Homeowners is similar to Consumer and Lifestyle in that it creates lists of consumers, but this time it includes information on people who have moved within the last two years to the last two weeks, I'm sorry, to the last week. Again, using that advanced search feature, you can fully customize your search by location, move distance, time frame, and resident details, such as if they are a homeowner or a renter. And much like uh, Reference Solutions US Businesses, US New Businesses is a hyper-local customizable database that you can use to build a B2B sales list. Using the advanced search, you can search for businesses that have opened within the last two years to the last week. And all the features remain the same in new businesses and new movers and homeowners. You can still view the results as a list, a chart, a heat map, and continually refine to larger and smaller areas. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop back into the databases for just a little quick overview. Going back to our homepage here, um, we're gonna look at new businesses and new movers and homeowners. Let's start with new movers and homeowners. Once again, you're gonna show the advanced search to customize your search. And here, since there are fewer homeowners, we might wanna search with a, um, the whole city and then kind of go back and forth. And as you find areas in the city that have had a lot of people moving, you can then hone back into a zip code. 
So let's go ahead and start with Philadelphia again. And then we select our city, making sure it's the right Philadelphia. We can update our count and we already can take it down. Next, we can decide what kind of information we're looking for. So based on our example, let's look for people who have recently bought homes, both confirmed and probable. And let's look for that income of over $200,000. Um, so we can do that by income. Actually, let's not look at income this time. Let's look at home value. Let's look at home value over $200,000. So let's do 200,000 up to 800,000 as our example this time. Update our count. We have 7,600 people, possible clients. And we can also take a look at our um, move distance and time frame, just to show you um, time frame. If we wanna find people who have moved within the last say three months, that brings us down to 2,200 people. And the move distance, this is more useful if you're looking at a smaller area. We can find people who have moved from at least five miles, or if you wanna find people who have moved from really far away, we can put in you know, a 100 to 500 miles. It can be interesting to see um, that difference as well. Oops, I always reverse it, 100 to 500 miles. So we only have 31 people that have moved from that far away. It can be kind of cool to check that out. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and take a look. Um, you can also omit different items. So you can omit certain zip codes, say as a house painter, you don't wanna take your truck up to the far Northeast. Um, you can remove a far Northeast zip code and just keep it really tight into an area that you wanna work in. Um, so let's go ahead and view our results. We have 2,200 results. And it should look really familiar. Um, again, the same rules apply. You can save your search. You can view our heat map. You can look at summary and chart information. Um, if you look at one record this time, it's just gonna have a lot less information available. Um, so here we have the name, what kind of house it is. So it's a condo um, and the estimated income. And if we go back, we can always decide to um, revise our search, or if we wanna look at a heat map and see you know, the whole city. If we look at the heat map, we can see which zip codes have the highest instance of this kind of mover. So we're kind of all over the map, um, but we can see that 19146 and 19128 have the highest instance. We can click on that and go directly to an area. We can see here in this kind of Point Breeze, New Bold area, there are a lot of people with that income um, and that, that expensive $200,000 to $800,000 home moving into this area. So it's pretty safe bet that this is an area we'd want to advertise in and target. And we can do our sales list just kind of around here. Welcome to the neighborhood, 10% off um, when you get your house painted, something like that. And again, you can change that default from location to income to home value. So this can be a really useful tool. Um, again, you can revise your search and change your information out. Say we're finding a lot of people in condos. Um, we can add in something like housing type if we wanna find just single family homes and exclude things like apartments and condos. Now we're down to just 2000. So that would remove those, um, those condos that don't need their houses painted necessarily. Any quick questions about new movers and homeowners? No questions so far. Okay. And let's just take a quick look here at new businesses, really similar. In our advanced search tab here, we have the option very similarly here. We can search for um, in Philadelphia, businesses that have opened within a certain time frame, say the last six months in Philadelphia. And here, um, you don't have to put an industry in if you don't want to. This one allows you to search only by SIC code for whatever reason. Um, so if we wanted to find new restaurants or new pet supply stores, we could add in that code. Um, or we can just look at general businesses that have opened. Let's just view our, re or let's update our count here. We have 805 businesses that have opened within the last six months. That's kind of a lot. Let's go ahead and do um, 
let's do three months instead. So 537, if we view our results this time, um, you have the same options. You can view the heat map. You can look at a specific record. Um, here, we're gonna see that, you know, just a little bit of information, what kind of uh, filing type they are, if it's a commercial work site, um, really simple, basic information. And here um, you can look at the summaries for these as well to see if there's a certain industry classification code, uh, maybe a certain SIC code that a lot of people are opening under. Let's go ahead and show the breakdown by SIC code, but it's the most popular one. So most popular business that's been opening in the last three months are restaurants, followed by home health care, followed by retail grocery stores and child care services. The rest have you know, very few results here. So that could be an item to start focusing on. We can focus on restaurants, home health care services, and grocery stores, um, especially for something like a cleaning service or um, a web building service, anything like that, bookkeeper, you might focus on those couple of industries. Any quick questions about new businesses? None so far. Okay, cool. Let's keep rolling. So remember when creating B2C sales lists, it's important to understand your target audience by conducting consumer and demographic research. Demographics are the characteristics of a human population. This information is often used by B2C companies, um, B2C business owners to conduct research into where opportunities exist within their market and in developing appropriate business and marketing strategies to target customers. After we learn about a population's demographics, we'll hone in on a more small audience and determine some key psychographics. Part of compiling a sales list consists of identifying your customer segments. Demographics and psychographics allow us to identify these customer segments. We can then parse each into individual characteristics and search regional areas to find those high concentrations. It's best to have a general idea of who you want to market to based on your market research and experiences before you begin, even if it's just an inkling, such as say new homeowners aged 30 to 55. The final free library database we're gonna look at today is Simply Analytics. It provides what I like to call hardcore demographics. It's a very advanced web-based mapping analytics and data visualization tool. And there are more than 75,000 data variables related to demographics, employment, housing, market segments, businesses, consumer spending, brand preferences, and public health. You can explore data by topic or by keyword search. Additionally, you can view your data on a map, comparison chart, ranking chart, or produce uh, demographic and housing overviews. Each view can be downloaded uh, to Excel or as a PDF. This database is usually only available within the BRIC, uh, but our friends at Simply Analytics provided remote access for as long as the library has limited hours and services. Use it at home while you can. Simply Analytics takes some getting used to because it has an overwhelming amount of data and information, and we're just gonna touch on its capabilities. Sharon Tina has included a link to the Simply Analytics user guide in the chat box. I'm just gonna do a quick demonstration of Simply Analytics here. Um, so like I said, this is a really intensive database. You can create a free account, which I recommend doing so you can save your work and save your favorite pieces of data. And when you enter the database for the first time, it will ask you to create a new project. And once you are signed in, you can see I'm signed in here up top. Once you're signed in, you can go ahead and you can access all of your um, existing projects or manage a project. So let's take a look at uh, 19147 since we've been looking at that recently. Whoops, my session has expired. I had it open for too long. Let me go ahead and open that again. Okay, so I'm gonna sign back in. There we go. 
So if we want to start a new project, let's look at 19147, since we've been finding that a lot of um, our target customers potentially live there. You can add in as many zip codes as you'd like. You can also add in um, the city for comparison measures and click next. It will then ask you to add what, um, what Simple Analytics calls seed variables. And from here, um, you might not care so much about housing built in 1939, um, but you're very interested in the, um, the median household and maybe incomes with incomes over $100,000. So from there, you can generate your list. Looks like my toolbar is a little bit in the way. There we go. So from there, it's going to default to that location that we entered and you can toggle back and forth between your items up top on the top toolbar. It's going to start by um, breaking it down by census tract. So all these smaller areas that you see kind of highlighted are the census tract areas. If you sort it any other way, it's just going to give you really large pieces of data, for example, by zip code. We already have that yellow outline of the zip code, so we don't really need that information. We want smaller areas so we can get a really good feel for where people within the zip code are, so we can go ahead and put that information and feed it back into reference solutions to get that targeted sales list. So here you have the option to add in additional locations. You can add in your data. You can keyword search your data. So if you wanted to find something like um, pet supplies or cats, for example, we had our, my guest appearance by the cat. So I'm very much cat brained right now. Um, and you can see anything that mentions cat, including catered affairs, unfortunately. But that's why we get a little bit lucky with the category information. We can go ahead and we can browse, say if we wanna find pet information, um, or cat litter, cat treat information, um, and by year. And now we can see everything that's related to cats, consumer behavior for pets, and for this last year. Anything related there. And we can further keyword search and filter as well. We have 642 results for cat and consumer behavior. So let's go ahead. I want to see. Um, pet ownership instead that limits us up to six results. So now we can see um, how many cats are in your household. Do you have one cat? Do you have four cats or more? Two to three cats? Um, so you can get very broad or very specific. Um, and it's, like I said, helpful to kind of know what you're looking for. Your other option instead of data searching could be just to browse. So if you're looking for, say, for example, age and gender information, you can click on age and it will give you all 23,000 results based on age. And again, you can hone in a little further if you wanted to find things like family type and marital status based on age, it will hone in a little bit more. If you click on the three dots on the uh, right hand side, it will allow you to select that piece of data, add it to your favorites or view metadata. Doing the metadata would just give you a little bit of information about where that is coming from and what the data means. If you go ahead um, and select it, you can use that data variable. It will add it to our results. And finally, when you sign in, it will give you the option to add it to your favorites. I love adding things to my favorites. You can see here things that I have been interested in that I've been using. Because as you can tell, this is a lot of data, 75,000 data sets. Um, it can be really useful just to save it because you might not be able to find it again. Um, one thing that I found yesterday that I had never seen before was people who like to buy from companies that donate to charity. Here, if we have any um, social innovators amongst us or if we have anyone who's a social enterprise, um, it can be really useful to see the um, percent or number of people that are interested um, in buying from companies that donate to charity. So here in 19147, we have a very small block. If you look at our key here, um, the, the deepest red is the most people who will be interested in purchasing from a company that also donates to charity. Um, other kind of interesting things are people who commute really a long time to work, probably a lot fewer now uh, during the pandemic, people are working from home a lot. But if you were that interior designer and you wanted to market to people who 
spend a lot of time commuting to work, say 60 to 90 minutes, that could be um, into Manhattan. That's a good indicator of people who don't have time to decorate their homes. And here's a nice area right over here of people that would be a good target. And it's, you know, where to, uh, where to spend your marketing dollars. So I definitely recommend exploring some of that data. Um, and you can also look at some comparison tables, some ranking tables, and you can take a look at different census tracts in an area and you can toggle between Philadelphia region and by zip codes and you can explore a little bit further and you can see where these people are living. Um, and you can export these items to Excel if you're looking at a chart, if you're looking more at a map view, you can export it to a PDF and you can snip it at any, um, any view that you'd like. And of course, you can zoom in and out using your mouse or using the plus and minus feature and you can actually get to specific streets. And Simply Analytics isn't going to give you names and phone numbers, but it can be really useful um, to get a really targeted view of an area of where people are um, spending money on items or are meet certain, um, certain gender, income, or education needs of your business. I'm gonna flip right on back to the presentation here. I wanna show you an example of why this can be particularly useful. So like I said, I recommend that you already know a little bit about your target audience before diving into Simply Analytics. Get to know where people with certain incomes already live or where there are a lot of businesses in an industry who you want to sell. Um, so here you can use Data Axle Reference Solution. You can narrow your search to a view zip codes or townships. And it's especially helpful since you can only view one variable at a time in Simply Analytics. I also recommend using Simply Analytics in tandem with reference solutions to generate sales leads based on location. Simply Analytics will not produce names and locations in the results, but it will tell you where, um, it'll tell you the number or percentage of results in a census tract or zip code are. For example, take a look at the search on the slide here and let's go back to our B2B example, a business looking to sell gourmet cat food or pet food. Um, to be more specific, let's pretend that I'm trying to wholesale gourmet cat treats to businesses. Full disclosure, you've seen my, one of my cats. I'm a bit of a cat lady. I have three at home here. Um, so I used reference solutions to find high income zip codes in Philadelphia. One of those zip codes is 19147 in South Philly. I then used Simply Analytics to search for people with four or more cats that live in 19147. Turns out there are quite a few people in this zip code with four or more cats. Plus, I know it's a high income area. Note that looking at the map in the top image, um, it's a bit, the red part there falls a bit out of the realm of 19147. It's in there, but it's also, um, we know zip codes in Philly are fluid and don't necessarily uh, adhere to neighborhoods. We're a city of neighborhoods. So just keep that in mind. Next, I turn back to reference solutions. You can see the image below. Um, I draw, I, I drew the shape in, uh, that I had in red in reference solutions. I drew that shape into reference solutions and I searched my map based search and I selected that shape and drew it. I then used that feature to plot the area from Simply Analytics. And within that shape, I searched for pet stores as well as snack and non-alcoholic beverage bars, which include bakeries and cafes. My search resulted in 22 potential businesses that you can now see on the screen. A sales list of 22 is very manageable and I could replicate this search in other zip codes as well. The search is very targeted. So when I pitch my gourmet cat food to these businesses, I can tell them with confidence how much money the people in their neighborhood generally make, what they tend to spend on pet supplies and that they are likely to have multiple cats at home just waiting for a treat that happens to be located under a pretty cake dome at their favorite pet shop or cafe. In short, use reference solutions to determine demographics and use Simply Analytics to explore and determine psychographics. Finally, use reference solutions again to generate a targeted sales lead and list. 
Do we have any questions before we wrap up? No questions so far. Okay, cool. So in summary, when using data axle reference solutions, always utilize the advanced search options to generate a list. Remember to select the appropriate database for your needs. You might not need to use all the reference solutions databases for your specific ask. Think of sales lists as projects and don't tackle too many at once. Be strategic about whom you're selling to and why. Perfect your sales pitch for that target audience and then move on to the next. Experiment with heat maps and charts to create visual documentation of your strategy using reference solutions, especially if you're just starting your journey um, with finding your target audience and or sales list. Utilize the reference solutions learning center and simply analytics support section. They offer webinars, articles, guides, and other useful information to get you started or to answer your questions about their resources. Of course, the Brick Business Librarians are also here for you. More on that in a moment. And finally, don't underestimate the power of demographics and industry research when compiling sales lists. You don't want to have crazy long sales lists. Um, a long list takes a very long time to get through and you'll most likely get a lot of no's. A shorter but targeted list is more valuable and a better use of your time. You're more likely to turn those leads into sales. And it's okay if you're feeling overwhelmed right now. This class is meant to be an overview of the resources that are available to you as you get started with sales lists. The business department in the BRIC is here to support your research. The business librarians do offer guided research appointments in the use of these resources to business that are currently operating. If you're not currently operating or you're looking to take a deeper dive into business research, we do ask that you watch the webinar of our Introduction to Business Plans class, Business Plan Toolkit, which we've added to YouTube. Once you've watched the class, or if you've attended a class or orientation in the past, you can then request an appointment with a librarian. Sharon Tina shared a link to Business Plan Toolkit and our other online classes um, and database demonstrations to the chat. Pre-COVID-19, the BRIC offered in-person classes and programs each month. We now offer virtual programs via Zoom. Librarians teach the introductory and series classes like the one you've attended today. And for topics beyond the expertise of a librarian, we partner with organizations to host programs and panels on topics like marketing, finance, and legal matters. Business Plan Toolkit is going to remain a webinar as it's very long. Um, it's broken into five parts on YouTube and we host a virtual series like this one each month. Sharon Tina and I hope to see you in an upcoming class again soon. And you can find more information on our upcoming events on our online calendar, which Sharon Tina shared a link to in the chat. Do we have any final questions? Not so far. Okay, well, feel free to type any last minute questions into the chat and I'm just gonna wrap up here and then I'll stick around for a minute or two after. So thank you for attending compiling sales list today. I know we covered a ton of information, but you'll be sent a recording of this class and all the links we shared in the chat. And remember that this class is meant to be an overview um, and a tour of the resources that you can access for free with your library card. Take some time on your own to explore further and get to know Reference USA and Simply Analytics. Then email brick at freelibrary.org if you have additional questions. Please stay in touch via our website, email, and or Twitter. You can always get the most up-to-date information by subscribing to our monthly newsletter. And Sharon Tina shared those links in the chat. I hope to see you again soon. I'm gonna end the recording, but I'll stick around for questions.